Okay, so we are we are firmly going down because I think it's pretty it's pretty clear to me. I'd I'd be willing to make the bet that the media is on the side of vaccine mandates. Okay, they want the top down control and the sense of theoretical safety that a vaccine mandate gives them in their own little bubble. And so that's why I think they support this. And I think, you know, blowing up ivermectin was kind of a method of many that they've undertaken to do that, whether we believe in vaccine mandates or not. But now it's coming. It's coming in the LA school district. It's, you know, Biden is trying to push this thing through the BLS. This is going to be a very, very big deal. By the way, another insane statistic, just sorry to interrupt. I saw this today. I forgot someone we know tweeted this. The who wants to guess the ratio of administrators to doctors in the US healthcare? system 300 to one yeah i saw it 300 to one yeah. 900 to one today oh my god and that is up from five to one in 1970 by the way Think about that. can i just build on what you said 900 to one your initial tweet said 300 to one and it ended in 2010 right before obamacare passed so from 300 to 900 was all obamacare yeah regulatory catch up sax is shaking his head which by the way uh <laughs> not, nothing against obamacare because i think like coming as a canadian i actually believe in subsidized health care and i think the the principle of obamacare was great but there was one fatal flaw which is it basically said okay you know what you're capped at the following margin and the minute that people said wait a minute i can only have a 20 percent gross margin what do you do you just jack up the prices to basically jack up revenue because if you can only take 20 percent, you're going to take 20 percent of a bigger number than a smaller number and so it completely burned the incentives for any healthcare company in the united United States to do anything other than just basically walk prices up. And it's funny because if you look at the stock prices of these companies, you you would have made more money being long United Healthcare than you would have been uh, owning Facebook, Google, any of these other tech companies in the last decade. Crazy stat. When Afghanistan happened, you know, we spent $2 trillion, 2,500 American casualties, 40,000 wounded. And what have we gotten out of it? The Chinese are about to take up residence in Bagram, in our splendid Air Force base. And uh, the Taliban are one of the best equipped armies in the world. That's basically what our $2 trillion got us. And okay. China's going to build a yeah. super highway. Right. <laughs> By the way, sorry, they're going to extract all Did you see we're... the thing where like the Taliban were flying around in our helicopter? It was, it was, How did they learn it, to it fly was, our helicopters? No, it was right. fake, apparently. Yeah, it was, it was fake, fake, fake news. Oh, fake news. Don't spread, do, it. Don't spread it. They do have more I black fake moral now. outrage then. Apparently, they apparently they, the helicopters that were left behind are non-functional. So let's just clear that up. That's not and, true. Yeah. They, they have more Black Hawks than any other army in the world except for us. <laughs> um, I mean, haven't you seen all the photos of them? They're all the decked Taliban? out in our uniforms. It's incredible. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got our night vision <laughs> goggles <laughs> and the whole photos thing. Photos on the internet. No, 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 no. There was reporting itemizing the inventory, the cache of weapons we left behind. It was gigantic. All right, let's it's get to the question now. Problem. The good news, bad news. Okay, so that, that's, that's the bad news. That's what $2 trillion of government spending got us. Um, the, the good news is I went back and I looked at how much money has been invested in the venture capital space over that same 20-year period that we were in Afghanistan. Yeah. And it roughly tallied up to about $2 trillion. I didn't know that, actually. I just I added up the charts. And about and most of it was in the last five years because there's actually been a huge acceleration in the yes. amount of money coming into VC over the last several years, the soft banks, the tigers, and so that you've had these late mega, stage funds. The yeah. mega late stage funds. So the truth is for really way less than I'd say a trillion dollars of, you know, early stage like true venture money, we've been able to create the entire technology ecosystem as we see it today. I mean not entire, I guess you go back twenty years, there's five years in the late nineties. So the 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 private enterprise system has accomplished so much with relatively so little money. You compare the efficiency of it, you almost wonder, how did we squander so much money in Afghanistan? How is it I mean, possible? It took active looting by many different forces to basically squander. I mean, think about like they every literally had to burn money. Every venture back company Google, at every Facebook, stage Tesla, in the last 20 years, Uber, Airbnb. that's how much money we spent in Afghanistan. I mean, how much of that money went to line the pockets of private contractors and, you know, warlords we were paying off? I mean, it was a giant kleptocracy. Okay. The CCP uh, is now um, moving to break up Alipay's uh, business. This is after Jack Ma uh, went on um, a holiday to learn how to oil paint. Thoughts, Chamath? Well, I think this is sort of like one other step in what we've been talking about for a while, which is that China is basically becoming um, a completely vertically integrated government 
where the public and private sector has no real clear delineation. And I think that that actually has a lot of implications to us because they export an enormous amount of technology and building blocks to us and we have no recourse if those guys either ever change their mind. And this is sort of what pulls us into this next very complicated phase of uh, geopolitics because, for example, if they decide to cut us off, you know, in our, it, they will invade a Taiwan. I've said this before, but I think that they will. And we will have no choice except to deploy troops into Taiwan. Because in the absence of the silicon that we need from TSMC and a couple of other manufacturers there, we have zero capability here. This is why you see Intel. Ha- I mean, for any like any second, when you guys hear an Intel press release that says they're investing 90 fucking billion dollars, do you not think, where does Intel come up with 90 billion dollars? Right? This is a pull through from US government because it allows us to start to rebuild an, an enormous amount of critical infrastructure that we've left to other people. So... You know, China is systematically decomposing and basically destabilizing all the China internet companies. They're going to control and inbound all of the critical resources. And we're going to have to have these really hard conversations unless this is again why I go back to I don't believe what you said. Entrepreneurs are not enough of the solution. We need the government to step in with intelligence, not with anything other than that. They don't need laws necessarily. They just need to understand the problem. And then you or, to, or get out of the way in some cases or step in and for example like you know allow the regulatory regulatory capture to be disrupted but they won't do it because special interests and by the way special interests what do they spend you know if you try to donate to a fucking congressman four thousand dollars two thousand five hundred dollars like these people aren't spending eighty million dollars to defend an eighty billion dollar business they're spending eighty thousand dollars and that's why we can't have progress. That's crazy to me. What do you think about decentralized crypto, you know, finance uh, in America? Should, uh, we, uh, should uh, we allow uh, it? Should we tax it? Should well, we, we regulate should clearly, it? We should clearly allow it because um, the, this whole crypto stack, this whole uh, decentralized finance stack that's being built could very well be the future of finance. And we certainly want to be ahead of that curve. Maybe there's some bubbles in here in, in that. But I think what's really interesting, there's a, certainly a lot of really smart engineers, coders, entrepreneurs who are going to that area. And so I think it'd be a mistake just to discount it. I think we want America to be on the forefront of that technology wave, just like every other technology wave. I'll make a prediction. My prediction is in the next 20 years, the DeFi movement will catalyze um, a movement against the open internet. And it is because state actors will compete with private actors for this battle between centralized institutional state-based control systems like I want to have a know your customer if you want to buy crypto in the US versus all of these offshore places where I can go and sign up, get a bunch of money and trade forever and never pay the IRS a cent and live my life in the ether. And the open internet will start to get threatened. We've seen this in the past where proxy servers and DNS servers got you know requests from the DOJ and takedown notices. And if that starts to happen, where all the servers and all the fiber lines that are running in and out of the US and elsewhere start to get kind of tackled, like China has a closed internet, um, you could start to see this become a really ugly battle that, that starts to play out. And I think we're not too far. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree, but I think the open internet is kind of going to be the, the great battleground to resolve this. Well, and the things. original battle was over information, and now it's over money and the dollar. Well, I think there, there's a really interesting point there, which is, you know, I remember the late 90s, the early 2000s, where the big technology investing wave was all about connecting people and goods into seamless global networks. And that's where all the investment went. Today, and and, and behind that was sort of this utopian idea that the internet was going to break down barriers and tribalism and remove geographic borders and create a single connected world. Well, what, what exactly is the bet on crypto today? It's a bet that Fiat currencies are going to collapse and deteriorate, be undermined by money printing. The U.S. dollar will stop being the world's reserve currency, most likely. That uh, individuals need to be protected against the rise of the authoritarian state. These are the big themes of crypto. And if you think of major technology investing waves as essentially a prediction market on what smart people think the future is going to look like, it's pretty scary that we're going from a utopian Technology investing wave to a very dystopian it, technology investing wave. It destroys wave. capitalism. You know, if you think about what capitalism is, it's not just a return on investment, but it's the tonnage of dollars, right? So anyone who's a big investor here, um, I'll pick out Jan because he's done an incredible job. 
you know, you're putting more and more dollars in for more and more dollars out. That's the pressure, Brad, you know, these guys are under enormous pressure to get tonnage of dollars through the system in a productive way. And so, you know, these guys are at the forefront. Um, but when you look at, you know, most of the projects on Solana, they're seeded with a few million dollars. And these are 60, 80 billion dollar market cap projects. Um, and so I don't know how capitalism survives in that world, number one. Number two, governance goes completely out the window because you're essentially replacing um, a set of norms that we've all agreed to about what a company is. It's an LLC or it's a C Corp that is incorporated with laws. There is recourse for you. You can go to these places and sue them. Now it's a DAO. It's a bunch of rules written in a blockchain. Here's how it all works. Here's how I make my HR decisions. Here's this, here's that, here's the other thing. Um, and then you basically decompose everything into a service where it's recursive. You cannot build with me unless you make yourself buildable to others. Okay. So when you add all these three things together, I think to, to me, it's the most incredibly positively disruptive force I have seen. I think it will destroy wealth. I frankly couldn't give a fuck. Um, and I think it's better for the world.